What's going down everybody? D-Dub here with a new video for you today. I'm actually pretty excited. What I have here is the TurboGrafx-16 Mini. This thing was announced in 2019 and it didn't come out in America. And then of course with COVID, you know, everything got pushed back. We weren't sure when this thing was gonna be coming out. And then just a few weeks ago, they said, hey, it's ready. So go ahead and get your order up. And I thought that was great because I had been checking prices for both the TurboGrafx-16, the PC Engine, and the Core Graphics for Japan and Europe. And people were scalping these things on eBay for like $300, $289. The list price for this thing is $99.99. And I believe it's the same for the other two, depending on where you live. And of course, if you're importing it or not, this is just one of the three. Like I said, there's the Core Graphics, and then there's the PC Engine for Japan, and people were scalping those too. The Core Graphics seems to be the less light out of the trio, but those are still going for $136, $149, $189. But this thing right here, the Turbo Graphics 16, this is the one I guess that's aimed for America mostly. And this was the one that was being scalped for ridiculous prices on eBay. Like I said, up to $300. I see people that had two of these things. They want $500 for them. And I'm glad that just a few weeks ago they said, hey, it's going out in about a week and a half. So go ahead and order it now because that means everybody that's on eBay that has these things in their hands that bought a bunch of them. When reviews started coming out for this thing, a whole bunch of people, they went on to Amazon of Japan and you were able to get this thing to your doorstep for about a buck 16. So people bought a bunch of these and I'm sure plenty of people are now kind of stuck with multiple because it's pretty much the same exact price as if you just order it yourself from Amazon America and have it shipped to your house. And there's a lot of people that are just going to be kind of stuck with multiple of these things. So hopefully the scalpers in the end, they get theirs. So. I'm really excited about this thing, but we'll get to that in just a second. TurboGrafx-16, as I said, is known in Japan and France is the PC Engine. It's cartridge-based home console made by Hudson Soft, and in this case, this was produced by Konami. I'm, um, there's their name right there, good old Konami, which um, it seems that they did about, they get about a C, I guess, on this project for actual TurboGrafx enthusiasts. For people like myself, it seems to be getting rave reviews with the games that are on it, but it's a mishmash of Turbo Graphics and PC Engine games, so you have some of the Japanese versions of some of the same games. Some of the best ones, like A Snatcher, is on here, but it's only in Japanese, so it's kind of like, what the hell, Konami kind of... They should have just left it off versus putting a version of a game that's really highly sought after. It hasn't been translated. The actual version of the game is a ridiculous amount and they didn't you know, they still bothered to put it on here why so the turbo graphics originally released in japan in october of 1987 and it didn't come out in the united states for about two years later it was like august of 1989 and you know this thing came out a month after i was born in japan but growing up i didn't even really know about this thing until many years later maybe when i was like 10 or 11 looking on different websites like GameRevolution.com, Cheat Code Central, where you would go to the different systems and you would see stuff like TurboGrafx-16 or the PC Engine or the Wonder Swan or the Sega Master System or the, the Sega, what is it, the MX-1000 and all these other different computer systems, the Commodore, all these different things that for mainstream, at least, you know, I live in New England, but for us, it was basically either Nintendo or Sega. There were no other game consoles. We didn't know about no TurboGrafx-16. And it's kind of a shame because, you know, this thing came out, a lot of people loved it for the time, but it honestly was, it, it was a flop next to the NES. It didn't have that, you know, super mainstream breakthrough. And it's, it's kind of sad seeing as how loved this thing is and how much inexperience so many gamers have. I mean, everybody's played Mario on the NES, but not everybody has played like a Bonk's adventure. You know, let's look at the games. We got like Blazing Lasers, Alien Crush, Dungeon Explorer, Newtopia. That's probably one of the better games. We got, you know, Space Harrier, Splatterhouse. I'm not a big Splatterhouse fan. Not really the original one, but maybe it's better on the Turbo Graphics. So we're gonna be checking that thing up. We got Easebooks 1 and 2. Never played either of those, so 
I'm definitely pumped for that. We got Parasol Stars, Ninja Spirit, Air Zonk, Newtopia 2, New Adventure Island, eh, you know, Soldier Blade. Got Bomberman 93, and I believe Bomberman 94. What is the... Bomberman is not that great, but this is basically the Hudson Soft made console, and then you partner that 30, 32, 33 years later with Konami. This thing, for the most part, is the Konami Hudson Soft box, so you're not getting the full experience here, and I think that we've kind of been a little bit wrong for that. You know, we're going to be, be leaving that to the hackers and, you know, emulation to kind of pull through for the system for us, and that's what I'm planning on doing. But this is like a highly revered system and highly regarded for me because I've seen videos, I know some of the games, but I've tried to stay away because I knew at some point, I mean, they're going to come into contact with Turbo Graphics. I'm going to find some games for it, you know, something along those lines to where I'm going to be adding it to my collection. So this is a great way to start and to see what games there are. But the problem with the mini consoles, say, you know, for instance, over here, I have the Super Nintendo, I got the NES, I got the Sega Genesis, I got the PlayStation Classic. If you didn't grow up with that, you're going to get this thing. Same for here. We got, you know, about 50, I think like 54 games between both of the regions, which once again, it's a very strange choice. But when you were a kid and you got an NES, you got Dunk Hunt and Mario. That was what you were playing. That's all you were going to get. You weren't getting another game on the eShop. You weren't going onto Steam. You weren't getting a, a discount for The Legend of Zelda at $15. That wasn't happening. You'd get your one game and that's it. You're done. Go play your Nintendo. Go play your Sega. You're done. You want money from me? You're, you ain't getting shit from me. Sorry. Is it your birthday? Oh, that's not for eight months. Is it Christmas? That's not for 10 months. You're getting Mario Bros. You're going to play Mario Bros. And you're going to be a master at it. So that's basically what it was like to be a kid. You know, you'd find different games. And that's what's so cool about even gaming today, I mean, there's so much more news, there's so much more hype, there's so much more YouTube and Twitter, and everybody's talking about all the big games coming out, so everybody knows about it. Say you're 10, 12 years old right now, though, and you're not really into YouTube, you don't watch much gaming, you're going to school, you watch a little bit of YouTube or cable television. I don't have cable, I haven't had cable in like 10 years, so it doesn't make much of a difference to me, but say you're that age range right now, you're, you probably know about the games that your friends are playing, the ones that your friends are talking about in school, but there's still that mystery and magic of going to like a Walmart or a GameStop and seeing a game that came out maybe a few months ago. You haven't seen the wall of video games in a while. You haven't been there in a bit. Seeing a new game, wondering what is it? Seeing the art on the front, maybe asking somebody to take it out of the case. You look at the back, you say, hey, let's go for it. And that's the same for the Nintendo, the Sega, the PlayStation, the Super Nintendo, the Turbo Graphics 16, which, like I said, cartridge based, the little hue cards, you know, they're credit size, credit card size games, and that's pretty cool. So you'd have to go and see your friends, you'd have to see what they had. Talking to kids in school, I'll let you borrow this for that. That's how it was growing up for everything from Nintendo 64 to Super Nintendo to NES, the Sega Genesis, the PlayStation 1 and 2. What games do you have? Hey, I'm borrowing this. Let me go look at your little wall over here. I'm borrowing this. Mm, I'll let you borrow it if you're trusted, if you live close to me. But other than that, I wasn't letting people at school borrow games. I wasn't bringing video games to school. There's plenty of stories out there of stuff like that. Kids, you know, getting bullied, getting their games stolen, get, leaving their NES cartridges in their locker, coming back. There's someone took a piss all over it and, you know, picked their nose and put boogers all over it and, you know, set it on fire or spray painted it. So anyways, those are the classic golden days of, you know, early cartridge-based gaming. This right here is a system that I've just been waiting for, and I can't wait for the hacking crowd to make it so that I can pretty much put everything on here. But I'm not just going to do, like, what these mini consoles are, the, the habit of them, and kind of, like, the danger of them is, say you're, you know, like I said, say you're 12 years old. You've never played the Super Nintendo before. You've seen videos of it, you've heard it, or you get this thing, there's like 50 games on it, and you just basically start playing one, five minutes later, go to the next one. Oh, this one doesn't seem like my thing. You get 30 seconds in, you shut off. I mean, I can do that on the NES Classic for like two or three hours. I got like 700 games on it. You go through, you pick one, you open it, you maybe play 30 seconds. It's like a top-down, not even a twin-stick shooter, just a... It's a D-pad shooter. You get killed 30 seconds in, you shut it off, 
on to the next one. And that's kind of the danger of the mini consoles, but I'm gonna be doing probably a bunch of videos on this because this thing, it feels good to have. I wish it was an actual original system and I wish that the thing was less of a flop so that there was more copies out there and it was more available to someone like me because my gaming history is rooted in this thing somewhere. I didn't know anybody with a Turbo Graphics. I, like I said, I never heard that name until years later, way after Nintendo, way after Sega, when I heard that this thing existed and that it was like, you know, Turbo Graphics 16 slash like the Core Graphics slash like the PC Engine slash there was the PC Engine Shuttle, and then they came out with the CD add-on. You had the, you know, TurboGrafx-16, like, CD expansion. Those were, like, the, the CD-ROMs, and then it was, like, the, the Super CD, and then you have the one where you can hook the Super CD and the Core Graphics or the PC Engine in that, um, I forget what they call it. It's, like, that box that basically puts it all together. It's a little bit better than, you know, kind of the way that, like, a Sega Genesis used all their extra accessories, but... I didn't really start realizing these things till like way later after the time. I mean, my brother, he had a 32X, but I'd never seen a Sega CD. I didn't realize there was a Sega CD or that the, you know, Famicom disc system was a thing or that, you know, the Saturn. I still to this day have never touched or even played a Sega Saturn as much as I love the Dreamcast. For some reason, we skipped from Sega Genesis to the PlayStation 1 and I was fine with that, but you know, again, another system that's just so costly, so ridiculous. There's not a lot of it out there. Everything is so inflated that for me as an old man trying to get a Sega Saturn and trying to dive into that and play these games legit, I have not really emulated either a Sega Saturn or any TurboGrafx-16 games, but this is basically just my story and this is gonna be my dive into the TurboGrafx-16. There's gonna be more videos coming and I'm going to try my hardest to not just flip through the games and just play five minutes of this and go, okay, I'm done with that, I'm done with this. I'm gonna be doing some reading. I'm gonna figure out which titles are the ones to go for. Maybe play some of the starting ones that came out on the system and kind of do them kind of in a row from like how they were released, at least to sort of simulate what it would have been like when you first got this system. I could plug it in right now, I could unbox it for you. And I could go to one of the later games that, you know, shows off the graphical capability of this thing. But I would rather, I guess, have a little bit of restraint and have a little bit of discipline and just kind of, you know, a little bit more... Uh, it sounds silly, I guess, to say, but like a little bit more respect, you know, going back to like heritage, like history, gaming history right here. So that's the plan, I guess. I'm going to be unboxing this thing. We're gonna read up about some games. Hopefully, this thing is gonna get hacked soon, and then I'll be able to, I'll be able to, to curate a decent list. And we're gonna go through, and we're gonna see what this whole machine was about, what it is about. And like I said, as this thing is now, the way that it comes off the shelf, it seems like you know it gets kind of a C plus. It's got some A tier games on it. It's also got some D tier games on it. Some stuff that really didn't need to be on here. And some of the untranslated stuff, you know, from the videos I've seen and what the games are and what they entail and like RPGs and they're not translated and then they put it on the PC Engine side. That part, you know, it pisses me off. Featured games are in Japanese. Le jeu PC Engine sonne japonaise. Le gyocha della rakata sonne en lengua japonaise. Dian Fato spiel sind ant u japonese. Goes disponsible solmonte japonese. That doesn't tell you right there what's going on with this thing. So, anyways, we're gonna crack this thing open. What do you say, guys? You wanna crack this thing open? You wanna take a ride in the DeLorean and go back to 1987? I do. I've never got to touch a TurboGrafx-16 controller. This thing showed up in my mail hours ago, and I have not even opened it yet. I've just been looking at the box, waiting for it. So, TurboGrafx-16 pretty much is the next gaming console. The only thing I'm missing before I open this is the actual Chuck Taylor vans on my feet. Oh, so, here we go. I'm pretty excited about this thing. You know, I know it has some great games on it. 
know that this thing is loved by a lot of people and it's also kind of a question mark for a lot of people and I don't want to be that guy anymore. I, I'm sick of having questions. So it's time to dig into this thing and learn more about it. So, you know, here's our your box. It's going to come just like this. We got this uh, little manual here. The instructions. Pretty self-explanatory, right? Am I wrong? I mean, we already know what's going to be in this thing. Let's take a look. It's got like a weird smell. It's not, it's not that pleasant factory smell. It's, I don't know, it's got like a food factory kind of smell. Like it smells like food. But I know this controller here, we got a super long cable on it. The originals did not have that. Oh man. Things may be better than an NES controller. Dare I say that? So you don't have select and start, you have select and run. That's kind of funny. I always thought select button was... I don't know, like they could have called it something else. Or, I mean, these days we don't really even have a select button. It's kind of like the other button, like the Xbox One controller. You just have kind of the menu menu button. But, I mean, look at this, uh, look at this dang controller here. I mean, look at this thing. We're going to try to get, like, as close up as I can. And this thing has a nice feel to it. I think it's kind of weird, though, how they went from the PC Engine to Turbo Graphics, the way that they made the system bigger, the way that they put this, you know, giant round hump, so to speak, on this thing, on the controller here, and the way that the back panel of the system is kind of something similar, bulky, it's sticking off. Granted though, I mean, the attachment for it was for the CD unit that would later come out for the thing, the Super CD. I mean, you had so many different like versions and iterations of this thing. And we got the antenna switch, we have the fake, fake antenna switch, fake channel three slash four right there. So that's kind of a nice little touch. Of, of course it's fake, it looks fake. I mean, this thing, I guess, is built pretty well. You know, everyone knows that we got the little notch for the hue cards, and then we got this little pop-off here. Um, so, you know, for anyone out there, you really just need to lift up on this lip. So it's not really pulling on the whole thing. I mean, that does work and it'll wear out over time. But if you can just get your fingernail under there, that's really the only part that's Holding it in is those two little teeth right there. See this micro USB connection, it needs to go. I think I'm feeding this. Yeah, I'm feeding it in the right way. But I know it's on the back of the Sega Genesis Mini. If you don't have the console directly like this as you're putting the wire in, if you're kind of, you know, coming up behind it and you're trying to put the thing in, it's like it doesn't want to go. And I've been dealing with this connector for the past 12 years with, you know, probably at least 15 to 20 different cell phones that I've had have utilized it. I mean, the wire doesn't really fit too well going on under this little plastic cutout here. I mean, I'm really going to have to, you know, kind of jam it in there. It's not, not really that great, but let's see how this... Uh, cover goes on with it. Okay, so I'm, I'll probably just leave this kind of in the box. So I guess, yeah, this doesn't, this doesn't make much sense the way that they, the way that they did it. Don't know why they did it that way either. Okay, and getting it, getting the wire back out is kind of the real problem here. So yeah, I'll, I'll agree with everybody else the way that they did this was kind of dumb. Doesn't really make much sense. And yeah, I guess you'd be better off with some kind of extension. Would probably be the way to go. We can feed it like that out the side and then that can go off the back. The other way just kind of seems like the best way to do it if you're not gonna use this cover. Which I guess if I was going to be setting this thing up full time, I mean, I might not bother. I might just not bother with this back cover. 
I mean, it's really only cool, like I said, because it's got the, the graphic on it. I mean, this thing would be much better off, yeah. When I'm, when we're talking about putting this thing on like a little desk here, and then maybe I'll unplug it to put it back on my table there, where basically all my mini consoles, they just kind of live with the power in them. You know, yeah, this back plate is going right back in the box right now. So obviously it's all about the games. But I gotta say, upon unboxing it, feeling the product, I like the controller. The system is eh, which I guess the original kind of seemed like it felt like that. So maybe it would have been better to go with the, uh, the PC Engine side. Just to have it be a little smaller. People talk about how big this thing is. It's really not that big considering... The original is, you know, it's the size of a laptop, I guess. So here's kind of the way that we're rocking it. These little notches here, they're so, so silly. We're taking these and we're taking a little bit off. There we go. Perfect, perfect. I just modified my my mini console. There, now this wire can much more freely come in and out of this little notch here. This, th this thing was built weird to begin with, so hey, I can't really hold that against them. How, how are you gonna make a mini? And then if they didn't make the TurboGrafx-16 and they said, hey, we're just giving the US the, the PC Engine version, I think people would have been mad as it is, so no cue card, maybe I should have just gone with the PC engine, whatever, it's the TurboGrafx-16 baby, it's now in my household, and even though it's not the original system, it's the closest thing I'm probably ever going to get, unless fortune happens and uh, this YouTube channel takes off, or someone wants to support on Patreon, which I, I don't have. Maybe that's an option someday, so I'm gonna kind of set this thing up and we'll see what this thing can do. So guys, that's the end of this video. Just an unboxing and my story of a kid that grew up cold and lonely in a cardboard box with no TurboGrafx-16 in his life until he turned 32 years old. Kind of a sad story, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed the unboxing. I think I'm going to be doing just single reviews, maybe getting a kind of a grasp little bit more on this thing instead of just reviewing the unit as a whole so be on the lookout for that and then as I gather more experience with the TurboGrafx-16 I think we're gonna come back and do some do some other videos on it kind of a, a total take on it more of a history on the system my experience with it and just the experience of someone that's just now getting to actually finally have the TurboGrafx-16 in his life so be on the lookout for that Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then I'm very happy for you. I'd say hit the like button, leave a comment, subscribe, but nobody does that anyways. So this is D-Dub saying thanks for watching. Peace out. Bye-bye. Have a good day. And I'll see you in the next video. Turbo Graphics. This is D-Dub out. Peace.